The Death of Moses Moses had lived for 120 years. He was getting close to the end of his life. The children of Israel would be led into the Promised Land by a new leader. Moses was saying his final words to them. The final words a person says are significant. I think about the final words of John Wesley, who said, Best of all, God is with us. What do you say in the closing days of a ministry or the closing days of a life? God's leaders come and go. God never changes. So the people of God will have God with them. Moses surveys the legacy. Moses' words were often scathing and severe throughout the book of Deuteronomy. He had to deal with the people's sin. However, at this point, his words were full of mercy and grace. Deuteronomy 33, 1-5 This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the Israelites before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned over them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came with myriads of holy ones from the south, from his mountain slopes. Surely it is you who love the people. All the holy ones are in your hand. At your feet they all bow down, and from you receive instruction, the law that Moses gave us, the possession of the assembly of Jacob. He was king over Jeshurun when the leaders of the people assembled, along with the tribes of Israel. In Deuteronomy 33, 2-5, as he surveyed their inheritance in God, he spoke of God's beauty. Without a doubt, the most memorable experience in Moses' life occurred on Mount Sinai, when God revealed his glory to his servant and gave him the Ten Commandments. You will never be the same again once you have seen the glory of God. What our generation needs is to rediscover the aura, awesomeness and magnificence of the eternal God of heaven. Most Bible teachers believe that the word saints in 33.2 refers to angels and in verse 3 to the people of God. Here is the picture of God coming down with thousands of angels. Here are a series of statements about God's care. Moses was speaking about the safety of God's people. We are completely in his hands. We are sandwiched between his shoulders. Verse 27 says, And underneath are the everlasting arms. That seems pretty safe to me. Deuteronomy 33, 6-25 Let Reuben live and not die, nor his people be few. And this he said about Judah. Hear, Lord, the cry of Judah. Bring him to his people. With his own hands he defends his cause. Oh, be his help against his foes. About Levi, he said, Your Thummim and Urim belong to your faithful servant. You tested him at Massah. You contended with him at the waters of Medabah. He said of his mother and father, I have no regard for them. He did not recognize his brothers or acknowledge his own children. But he watched over your word and guarded your covenant. He teaches your precepts to Jacob and your law to Israel. He offers incense before you and whole burnt offerings on your altar. Bless all his skills, Lord, and be pleased with the work of his hands. Strike down those who rise against him, his foes till they rise no more. About Benjamin, 
he said, Let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him, for he shields him all day long. And the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. About Joseph, he said, May the Lord bless his land with the precious dew from heaven above and with the deep waters that lie below, with the best the sun brings forth and the finest the moon can yield, with the choicest gifts of the ancient mountains and the fruitfulness of the everlasting hills, with the best gifts of the earth and its fullness and the favour of him who dwelt in the burning bush. Let all these rest on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. In majesty he is like a firstborn bull. His horns are the horns of a wild ox. With them he will gore the nations, even those at the ends of the earth. Such are the ten thousands of Ephraim, such are the thousands of Manasseh. About Zebulun he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and you, Issachar, in your tents. They will summon peoples to the mountain, and there offer the sacrifices of the righteous. They will feast on the abundance of the seas, on the treasures hidden in the sand. About Gad, he said, Blessed is he who enlarges Gad's domain. Gad lives there like a lion, tearing at arm or head. He chose the best land for himself. The leader's portion was kept for him. When the heads of the people assembled, he carried out the Lord's righteous will and his judgments concerning Israel. About Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's cub, springing out of Bashan. About Naphtali, he said, Naphtali is abounding with the favour of the Lord and is full of his blessing. He will inherit southward to the lake. About Asher, he said, Most blessed of sons is Asher. Let him be favoured by his brothers and let him bathe his feet in oil. The bolts of your gates will be iron and bronze and your strength will equal your days. Moses looked back on God's blessings on the children of Israel. It's similar to how Jacob blessed his children in Genesis 49. He works his way down the list, tribe by tribe. There are a lot of blessings in there. Moses sees the land. God allowed Moses to see the promised land as one of his final acts with him. Deuteronomy 34, 1-4 Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land, from Gilead to Dan. 2. All of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Mediterranean Sea. 3. The Negev and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zoar. 4. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. God placed Moses on Mount Nebo, a high vantage point from which he could see all of Canaan. God allowed Moses to see where the children of Israel were going. We've all heard the story. We know that Moses was not permitted to cross the Jordan because of his disobedience. 
That must have been a huge letdown for him. You may be dealing with a major disappointment, something you wanted to do or an aspiration that never materialized. Remember that when you are going through a difficult time, God has an appointment with you. God wishes to instruct you in something. Moses was not permitted to enter the land, but seeing the land reminded him of God's great promise. Patience, as explained in Hebrews 10.36, is part of the process of waiting for God's promises. Interestingly, Moses did eventually enter the promised land. According to the New Testament, when Jesus ascended the Mount of Transfiguration, he met with Moses and Elijah. Hebrews 10.36 You must be willing to wait without giving up. After you have done what God wants you to do, God will give you what he promised you. Luke 9, 31 They looked like the shining greatness of heaven as they talked about his death in Jerusalem, which was soon to happen. According to Luke 9, 31, they were discussing Jesus' death or departure with him. Exodon is the Greek word from which we get the word exodus. Moses was familiar with the concept of an exodus. Grace brought in what the law kept out. Because of his sin, Moses was barred from entering the promised land. According to the Bible, Moses gave the law, but Jesus Christ brought grace and truth. Jesus brings us into the promised land. John 1 17. The law was given through Moses, but loving favor and truth came through Jesus Christ. Moses serves the Lord. Deuteronomy 34, 5 to 12. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab in the valley opposite Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died. Yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. 8. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days, until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Moses was serving the Lord even in his final minutes and hours. You want to die according to God's will. You want to die in the Lord's service. Moses passed away. His eyes were not frightened. He didn't require bifocals, trifocals, or contacts. That means he was 120 years old and still in good shape. In Jude 9, the archangel Michael is mentioned as assisting the Lord in burying Moses. Jude 9 Michael was one of the head angels. He argued with the devil about the body of Moses. But Michael would not speak sharp words to the devil, saying he was guilty. He said, the Lord speaks sharp words to you. It's a good thing no one has ever discovered Moses' burial site, because they would have built a shrine and charged a lot of money to enter. Weeping and mourning lasted 30 days. Take note of what Moses did right before he left. This is priceless. 
Deuteronomy 34.9 says, Now Joshua, that's the man who would be replacing Moses, the outgoing leader laid hands on his replacement. The Holy Spirit did not indwell people in the Old Testament as he does now. God's Spirit appeared at specific times and places to perform specific tasks with a specific touch. Moses' life came to an end. What an adventure! The Lord Jesus is the only one greater than Moses. Hebrews 3, 5-6 Moses was a faithful servant owned by God in God's house. He spoke of the things that would be told about later on. But Christ was faithful as a son who is head of God's house. We are of God's house if we keep our trust in the Lord until the end. This is our hope. Moses had lived a very long life. He was born in Egypt to a slave couple, was laid in a basket in the Nile River, raised in Pharaoh's palace, went into the wilderness for 40 years tending sheep, and then returned to lead the children of Israel through the wilderness where God gave the law and the tabernacle. 